Hello everybody, my name is Liam Malkov and you are on Astrobath. Astrobath is not a place, it is a space where I charge my Astro batteries and share that energy with you. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, Optalon L Extreme filter and uh, answer the questions why you should use it, why I have used it uh, while I make an astrophoto of the Rosette Nebula and why today I will use uh, this filter to make an astrophoto of Orion Nebula. So you see the temperature today uh, is about uh, 15 degrees below zero uh, Celsius. Uh, it is not cold, it is not a severe cold today, that is why I'm so <laughs> happy and so excited because the sky is absolutely clear even with uh, the light uh, here i can see the stars and so i collect that energy i see pleiades uh, star cluster there the orion uh, constellation is there and uh, i'm happy to talk to you about a uh, difficult subject uh, for the majority of people because uh, I feel that every uh, person who is interested in astronomy should understand what he does. And uh, sometimes uh, people simply, uh, simply imitate uh, something that was uh, done earlier uh, by other astrophotographers or astronomers. They just copy that uh, behavior without uh, real understanding uh, what they do. And, uh, uh, you may ask uh, why I have chosen uh, to do an astrophoto of Orion Nebula once more and uh, uh, the response is right here. The, uh, the Orion Nebula is uh, the area of star formation and uh, the fact is that uh, it is an emission nebula and uh, every emission nebula uh, emits something, uh, it emits photons and why uh, does it emit those photons? Uh, that is the question. And uh, the same type of uh, nebula is uh, the Rosette Nebula uh, that I did the astrophoto of uh, uh, last time. And uh, mm, the uh, Rosette Nebula has NGC uh, 2244 uh, in the center of it. The Orion Nebula has Rapetium. Uh, ne uh, star cluster uh, in it and uh, those uh, types of star clusters are similar to uh, the Pleiades star cluster and uh, uh, in addition to that uh, the the nebulas uh, or nebulae uh, will uh, disappear in the future because all, all that uh, hydrogen that uh, makes uh, those uh, nebulas will be uh, taken by other stars and uh, the stars will form out of that uh, hydrogen, of that matter. And uh, why does uh, uh, the Rosette Nebula emit something? Why is it red? Uh, so my question is, do you know what is light? Uh, the light is the stream of particles called photons. It is also a wave and uh, uh, every wave has its length, uh, the distance uh, between uh, its maximums or minimums, highest points and lowest points. And uh, the wavelength of light, uh, of, the wa of the waves that we call light, electromagnetic waves, uh, lies uh, between something like uh, 380 nanometers up to uh, 760 nanometers. Uh, the quality of that stream uh, differs, of that waves uh, uh, differs uh, from the shortest uh, to the longest waves. And uh, they are ionizing uh, radiation uh, has the shortest 
uh, wavelength. It is, uh, it, it is uh, shorter than uh, the violet uh, color of spectrum, than ultraviolet uh, that is uh, produced by our sun. And uh, even shorter than we have gamma rays. And the uh, long uh, waves are red. And remember that the Rosette Nebula was red. The Orion Nebula is also red, uh, pink and red. And uh, uh, infrared, it is the warmth. And uh, then we have uh, other types of waves that we are not interested uh, in now. And uh, uh, what does uh, the filter do? And why is uh, the Orion Nebula red? And why is the Rosette Nebula red? The fact is that nebulae are made of uh, the matter. Uh, that matter is uh, hydrogen. And uh, the stars that are being formed in the center of those nebulae, uh, ionizing uh, the matter around them. The, the diameter of those nebulae uh, is measured in light years and uh, they are quite big. And uh, uh, the fact is that uh, when uh, the star ionizes the matter, the matter uh, receives certain energy. And the electrons inside that atoms, uh, they jump from one level to another. And when they return from the third level to the second level, they are rotating. It is a simple, simple model of atom, but still, they are flying around uh, the nucleus. And when they return from the third level to the second level, they emit. That is why uh, they emit the particle of light. They return that energy to the uh, space and uh, they emit on the wavelength of 656.28 nanometers. And uh, we call that line, that emission line, hydrogen alpha line. And that is the uh, wavelength that is uh, not reflected by the filters and uh, that is why we get a high signal to noise ratio uh, because all that parasite uh, wavelengths are simply cut off and uh, we get only that uh, type of light that color of light to our uh, astro cameras or cameras uh, DSLRs or other types of uh, cameras. And uh, also, uh, that is why uh, the astro cameras that are specialized for doing astrophotography do not have an infrared filter. Just uh, you should understand that. Uh, because uh, although we have plenty of infrared, because our sun is also a star and it also emits in all wavelengths, and uh, we do not have uh, that type of light at night. And that is why <laughs> we just, uh, we shouldn't cut off that wavelengths and uh, get as much data as possible. So that is all that I wanted to tell you about the emission lines and about star formation regions and about emission uh, nebulae. And uh, right now I'll go to my astro, uh, astro tent and I'll do the astro photo of the Orion Nebula using my L-Stream uh, dual band filter. And the filter is called dual band because it doesn't cut uh, the lines of uh, uh, double ionized oxygen. And uh, it also uh, has its color, it is a green, greenish blue and uh, that is uh, another story. <laughs> so you'll see the result right now and uh, see you next time on Astrobeth. Bye bye.